Hi and welcome to my channel. So my name is Nienke de Glas. I'm a clinical researcher and a clinical epidemiologist. And in this video, we will be talking about validating predictive models. So this video is part of a series on predictive research. And in this video, we will be talking about the concepts about calibration and discrimination. And then in the next follow-up video, I will also show you in SPSS how you can actually perform these type of analyses in your own data. So let's get started. So first of all, it's important to separate two methods of validation. So first of all, internal validation is the validation of your model in the data set where you also developed the model. So this is often a first step in order to assess if your model works at all. But of course, if you really want to test a model in its applications in real life, you will need an external validation set which means a separate data set with similar patients or a similar population in which you can test if the performance of your model is as good. Because if you only perform an internal validation, there is a large risk of overfitting. And this means that you actually overestimate how good your model works. And then if you would apply it to another country or another hospital or another setting, then it wouldn't work at all. So for this reason, it's quite important to perform not only an internal validation, but also an external validation. So let's take a look at an example. So Edgefront Online was a model that was available until a few years ago. Unfortunately, it's no longer available at the moment. Um, but it was a model that was used for patients with breast cancer who were already surgically treated. So the tumor was removed and it was used to make the decision whether additional chemotherapy was necessary. And as you can see on the left side, some predictors were entered, for example, age, but also some tumor characteristics. And on the right side, the expected outcomes of treatment are described. And as you can imagine, if the expected benefit of chemotherapy was very high, a patient was more likely to choose for that treatment. So it could really help physicians and patients to determine if it was a good idea to give this treatment. This looks very nice, of course, but it's important to look at the data behind it. And the first way to do this is to take a look at discrimination. And discrimination is generally assessed by looking at the area under the curve of a receiver operating curve, which is a ROC curve. It's a word that you may encounter a lot if you look at this type of data. And what it does is it actually uh, allows you to take a look at the combination of the sensitivity of the model and the specificity of the model. And if you want to know more about these terms, please take a look at one of my previous videos as it will help you to understand the concepts. So here you can see on the left side, there's the sensitivity of the model. And on the x-axis of an ROC curve is one minus the specificity. And again, this means that the best performing uh, model should be totally on the left side. So a good model should be uh, as much on the left upper side of the graph as possible. And if you see the dotted line in the middle, this represents the line that's just as good as flipping a coin. And in order to be able to do some calculations about graphs like this, the area under the curve is calculated, the AUC. And this is a term that you may also read a lot about when you look at predictive research. And the AUC can also be called the C statistic. This is really the same thing. So what it does is the model calculates for you the area that is under the, under the curve that's presented here. So if you would calculate the area under the curve for the dotted line, which is actually the line that you would get if you would just flip a coin, so either yes or no by chance, then you would get an AUC of 0.5. And this means that the model does not perform at all. It's just as good as flipping a coin, it does not add anything to that. And on the other hand, if you would have the perfect model that predicts everything completely right, the area under the curve for the C statistic would be 1.0, because then that would be the area that you can calculate under the curve. So generally we say that an area under the curve of 0.7 or higher, or even 0.8, is really good for a predictive model in these type of settings. So this is kind of an idea to estimate how good a model performs and also to compare performance of different models if you put them together in a graph, such as you can see here. So discrimination gives you some idea about the general performance of the whole model in the group, but it does not give you a more detailed idea of where the possible uh, mistakes are of the model. So for that reason, calibration is also important. So in this graph, you can see on the x-axis the 10-year predicted overall survival, which was predicted by the model. It goes from zero to 100%. 
And then on the y-axis, you can see the observed overall survival of 0 to 100%. And in this case, the ideal perfect prediction model would go straight through the middle, which here represents the dotted line. Because you would want that the patients with a very low predicted risk actually also have a, a low risk of the event that you're studying, in this case, mortality. So here you can see that these models are not performing really well because the lines are quite different from the dotted line in the middle. So in this case, you could say that the calibration of the model is not good because it strongly differs between uh, the dotted line and the model that is represented here. And it helps you because it can also show you where the mistakes are. So in this case, you can see for the blue line, the observed outcomes are much higher than the predicted outcomes, which means that the prediction underestimates the actual outcome. But for the red line, this is actually the opposite. So this can really help you to understand where your model makes mistakes and it may even help you to improve the outcomes of your model. So there you go, a short introduction to discrimination and calibration in validation studies for predictive research. So in my follow-up video, we will take a look at how you can actually perform these type of analyses in your own data using SPSS. So I look forward to see you next time. Mm -hmm.